Um, I'm actually running slightly behind. I'm actually pulling up to the gym right now. Um, but yeah, thanks for being here. Two people already. I'm famous. Uh, yeah, like the, like the title says and the description, and like I said yesterday, it's uh, leg day. So we got some, got some squats. Yo, what's up, John? Got some squats and some abs. And let's see if there's a good parking spot here. Oh, nice, right at the front. So today, um, I'm gonna have my brother. My brother's gonna be holding the camera for most of the time. So I'll still, still obviously be able to um, read chat and all that kind of stuff. But just while I'm doing my set. So it's not kind of weird like yesterday where I just uh, put the camera on the floor or on a bench or something and then um, do my set. I'll actually have him holding it. So it'll be better angles, especially on leg day because it's my favorite day. I can't have no subpar camera work on leg day. So... Yeah, I actually have a small tripod. Um, that's that's what I put it on yesterday when I had it on the floor. And um, oh crap, I didn't drink on my pre-workout. One second. Uh, it does not taste great. Actually, I might need to wait for him. I grab my mask but yeah i gotta I have a small tripod it's one of those um like flexible feet it has like flexible magnetic legs on it um works pretty well but obviously it's not gonna find the best angles and everything for me so What's up, Nate Dog? What's up, Derek? Back again for some more. All three of you, I see. Um, so yeah, like I said, just waiting for my brother right now. Should be here any minute. He said he's gonna be here at 9:01, so should be pulling up any second. They have speakers outside this gym too, so that's what you're hearing. <clears throat> and also hopefully the, the video quality will be better than yesterday sorry just trying to check my camera clean it off um hopefully the quality will be better than yesterday too because he's going to be using the the rear camera so it's going to be you know full full resolution and then we'll be trying to all turn around and face it towards me and talk to you guys <clears throat> And that's not him. So I'm actually already, if he shows up within the next five minutes, I'll already be impressed because uh, he's chronically late. And when I say chronically late, I mean like, if he says he's gonna be here at nine, he'll be here at like 11, if he even shows up at all. <laughs> but, I told him, uh, told him it's important, so he'll be here. Um, but yeah, what happened yesterday? Um, what do you mean in the stream, or just uh, just in general? <laughs> There's a lot happened yesterday. With the stream, I did, I did back and buys. Um, so basically my split is I do quads and calves, chest and tries, ham and glutes, back and buys. That's my four day split basically. Um, 
So today is quads and calves day. And usually on my legs day, leg days is when I'll do abs as well. So, yeah. I'll be doing uh, quads. And I say quads and calves. I just, it's more habitual than anything. I, I honestly don't usually focus on actual calf, calf uh, exercises. Sometimes I might do some calf raises or, you know a couple sets of some or like at least one workout four or five sets of some um but typically don't focus solely on calves just because uh you kind of hit them with other workouts depending on you know what you do um if he's not here in like two minutes i'll just go inside and wait on the inside he doesn't actually have a membership to this gym um because he just came from Utah, so I'm gonna be um, putting him on my guest pass, and hopefully they're cool, and we can do that. <clears throat> I'm actually depending on your brother. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna do it, you know, today and forever, whether he's here or not. But today, um, I want him to be here for. Just some better better camera angles and everything for you guys. But, yeah. But now for the future, um, honestly, I don't, even, I don't really know about uh, for the future what exactly I'm going to do. Because um, I don't know if I'll just get a different, uh, like a, a different type of camera that has magnets. Actually, my camera does have, a, like I said, the magnetic feet on it. So I can put it in some different positions up on the racks and, you know, on vertical surfaces that are metal. But uh, I could probably get some good camera, camera angles without them. But today, to make it easier and to make it better for you guys, I'm having him come. So he already said he doesn't really want to be on camera. Um, but he'll be holding the camera. At least, if he's already in there, I'm going to feel dumb. <clears throat> I also told him I'm going to be like five minutes late, which I ended up only being like one minute late. Um, so maybe he thinks I'm late, so he's going slow. But, like I said, one more minute. If he's not here, I'm going to go wait on the inside. Let me grab these headphones too. One second. Actually, I'm gonna have you guys tell me what sounds better. So right now it's just with my. Let's see if I can put you on this. This is a Genesis gym. Um. So yeah, right now, the obviously it's just connected to my phone. No headphones in or anything. I'm gonna put my headphones in, and I want you guys to tell me what sounds better because if it sounds better just it being out might as well just leave my headphones out anyway because i won't be listening to music or anything so this is no headphones <clears throat> and this is with headphones so testing testing you tell me what sounds better, with or without. And it might sound a little, no headphone sounds better, really? Damn. I'll do it again. Really, I got two no, two no's and one with. We'll see. It actually might be a different environment in the gym too, because since it's gonna be louder, it might actually be better with headphones because uh, there's going to be music and other people working out and all that kind of stuff. So uh, if it's if the environment is louder, it might sound better if it's you know closer. If I'm closer to the microphone as opposed to talking through the phone. Um, okay, I'm gonna go inside. They make us wear a mask to go in, so I'm gonna have to wear it when I go all the way inside. Actually. 
Yeah, okay, inside the gym, it will sound better. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully, this dude didn't get in the wreck or something. I don't even know why I said that. He didn't get in the wreck. Phone is not on my tripod right now, so um, I don't see him in here. There's like a little waiting area between the front or the uh, outside door and then the inside door, so uh, that's where I'm waiting. Because like I said, they're usually pretty cool. Um, again, depending on who is actually at the front desk. Um, people at the front desk right now are usually pretty cool. But we shall see. And I learned today that the headphone or the uh, microphone is on <clears throat> my left ear. So I don't know why that's important, but... Just interesting that I found it out today. <laughs> well, hopefully he shows up. Either that or it's going to be a Solo stream again, <laughs> which is no problem with me. Hopefully he's not like inside waiting already or something. Pretty good, yeah. Sorry for the for the wait. If I wouldn't have planned on him showing up, then I'd already be working out. But next time I'll just uh, get here earlier and start, and then I'll start the stream. Try the sound without the headphones. Bust this case out real quick. Oh, I think, yep, that's him right there. So this isn't actually all the way inside the gym. This is in the like lobby area, or I don't even know if you would call it a lobby, but I don't know if it um
Hear me through the phone now? All right, cool. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm using these Power Beats Pro, or yeah, and they're kind of finicky when it comes to one, one or both. My God, what is he doing? So they're kind of finicky when it comes to. <laughs> Thank you. Been trying to get it right. Grow it out for a while now. About four or five years. No, four years. So, knowing him, I'm assuming he is looking for clothes. He has his trunk open and he's looking in the back of his, and uh, drives an SUV. He's looking in the back of it right now. I'm assuming he's looking for clothes in there. So, it's not what you would uh, call the most prepared person, but we're gonna do this thing. Active on Instagram? No. Not yet. I'm probably gonna, I'm looking to get one soon, but not yet. Hey, can I put him on my guest pass? Um, I can't put him on there. Someone would have to. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Just come on, man. Hey, you need to go to the locker? Yeah, change, change, change. Back there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be on the Stairmaster. It's right back there. <clears throat> so. Yeah, like you probably heard me say to him, I'm gonna do Stairmaster for like, eh, just 10 minutes. Get my legs a little warmed up. Do that and we'll get some legs. Um, so yeah, this will actually be a perfect place to test the sound. How's the volume? How's the volume right now? Good, good, good. Bye. All right, just because I want to know for sure. I'm going to put the headphones back in and you tell me if it's better with or without. All right, this is with. What's better, with or without? And I'll trust whatever you guys say. With. With is better. All right, cool. Makes it easier for me too, because I don't have to be, you know, talking, talking right next to the phone. Okay, nice. Perfect. Lace up my shoes real quick. I wear my wrestling shoes for for leg day. Keep them low, low to the ground. Um, a lot of people like to use. Well, I don't know if I say a lot of people, but some of the more 
athletically or gym invested people like to use actual Olympic lifting shoes that have a raised heel on it. Um, but for some reason for me, I think just because my leverage is and I have long limbs and a short torso. So uh, I do better with flat shoes. I think people who have shorter limbs, you know, short legs, longer torso, or just more proportionate, um, I think they do better with a raised heel, just because, like I said, leverages and that kind of stuff. And then if you want to get really specific, there's differences in like, you look at the femur length versus your tibia and your hip angles and all that crazy stuff, ankle mobility. So, but just in general, I think I'm better with flat shoes because I have good ankle mobility and longer legs, short torso. So, and I know it might seem a little weird for, um, to do abs on the same day that you do uh, legs. I know a lot of people like to do abs on the same day they do upper body stuff. But for me personally, I like to do abs with my lower body days because I don't wear a belt. Um, I don't use knee wraps or any kind of wraps or straps or anything like that. So by doing abs on the same day, that I do uh, legs, when you do abs, you use, I mean, when you do uh, a lot of leg workouts, sometimes you use your lower back. Well, not sometimes, pretty much all the time, unless you're just using machines, you use your lower back for, uh, you know, stabilizing your core, stabilizing your whole body. So if I, if I was using a lot of lower back, and I started getting tight or sore or whatever, my core is what equalizes me. So little tip, if, you're, if your lower back ever hurts when you're doing squats or deadlifts, try doing abs the same day, like supersetted with your leg workouts. And it could counteract the... Uh, Basically, the what am I trying to say? The overworking of your lower back because they're antagonistic muscles. So if you activate an antagonist muscle, uh, it makes the opposite muscle relax a little bit. So just helps me out because. Uh, when you have a curved lower back, basically a booty pop, um, that's called lordosis. And it's actually pretty common for a lot of people. It's called lordosis or lower cross syndrome. And like I said, it's actually kind of common. So try some, try some abs with your leg workouts. Is that a good or a bad thing? Um, lordosis or lower cross syndrome? Yeah, that's another thing. Tight hip flexors, which is why we're going to do hip flexor stretches too. Um, as per Nate Dog's request. But basically, um, the whole body is connected front to back, left to right. So if you have uh, tightness or weakness on the front of one of the one of your joints, basically, then the opposite side will be either stronger or weaker in order to balance that out. So if I have tight hip flexors, most likely my glutes, since it's the opposite opposite side 
also cause my weak butt. Yeah, if you have tight hip flexors, you have, or tight, aka overactive hip flexors, you get uh, weak glutes because your body tries to, um, it just gets used to certain movement patterns and you start to uh, have like different imbalances because you're trying to almost like if you think of Jenga, if you have one piece that's out, sticking out on one side, above it and below it, you're going to have to have it sticking out the opposite way so it can balance. So that's what tight and underactive muscles are like. So is it a good or bad thing? It's a bad thing. You don't want to be, you don't really want to have a booty pop because of your, your skeleton per se, or your muscular system. Um, if you have one just because you have a big butt, then it is what it is. It's not a bad thing. Actually, it's most likely a good thing. It means you got a, a lot of muscle or fat. Either way, it's not a bad thing. But um, if it's like that because of an imbalance, like your spine is curved towards your tailbone, not a good thing. So one of the stretches we're going to do is going to help correct that type of imbalance. So uh, basically, I'm probably going to do one light set of squats. So put 135 on the bar or, you know, including the bar, 135, which is a 45 on each side. Do like mm, 20 reps, nice and nice and deep, really good form. Get those legs really uh, warmed up, muscles warmed up. And then we'll do some stretches. So we had requests for hip flexors and serratus anterior, which if you don't know what serratus anterior is, they connect from your ribs. The ribs are actually the insertion point, but they go all the way around, wrap around your back, and they connect to the spine of your scapula or the medial border of your scapula. So basically, the shoulder blades are like this on your back. It wraps all the way around from the front to the back on the part closest to the spine or part closest to your spine. So in it, uh, the action, yeah, finger like muscles near your ribs. Like when you see the really ripped people put their arm up and do that flex, it looks like the freaking valleys. What's my social media? Um, I'm just on Facebook right now. I mean, YouTube, obviously, but you're here. <laughs> uh, Facebook, you can just search my name and I'll pop up. Or I should, anyway. Got about a minute and a half left on Stairmaster. And I usually go a lot faster, but obviously I can't do that and talk at the same time. So, but yeah, just Facebook for social media. Um, not Partridge Fitness, just Miles Partridge. Your videos have been helping me for years. I was like, where is he at? I'm glad to see you back. Hey, thanks, man. I'm glad. I'm glad I can help you out. I appreciate you watching. And I appreciate the concern. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're glad. And I'm also glad myself to be back. So with some changes with social media and everything. This time, it's not gonna be a couple of mini videos and then disappear. It's actually gonna be, I wouldn't say full-time because I have a full-time work, but uh, more than what I was doing in the past, for sure. <laughs> You're fairly regular. Nate Dog told me about the uh, YouTube shorts yesterday, 
60 second videos. And those seem uh, right up my alley. I mean, obviously I still wanna do some longer, you know, 10, 10 minute videos. Um, but as far as frequency, oh damn it. Oh wait, no, one rack is open. Um, as far as frequency, being uh, posting consistently, um, YouTube shorts sounds like something that'll really work for me. So I'll pull out my tripod. As long as it's in here, got my chapstick because my lips were dry yesterday. And I licked them like 5,000 times. Probably look like a crackhead. Um, but yeah, YouTube shorts, that seems uh, really cool. I can do that for just short instruction and stuff. Even when I get requests for like, you know, different stretches and stuff like that. So this is the tripod I have. It's really simple. It was I don't even remember how much it was. I got it like literally eight years ago or something like that. But yeah, it's just uh, one of those. Welcome back, bro. You're still married. Still? What you mean still? Uh, I was never actually married before. I know I in some of my videos I had that ring on, but that was actually just a promise ring. But no, I'm not. That was ages ago. And now she was... Uh, that was a military thing, but, but yeah, this one has the, oh, I guess that's not, it's non-ferrous metal right here, but it has magnets and it sticks to certain metals. Now I'm just making myself look dumb. It does, I swear. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, let me actually put this on there. Um, but I am married, yes, but I'm not not to the person that I was with before. Are you gonna do vlogs? Um, probably not, to be honest, just cause, um, well, not a vlog in the, in the sense that, um, you know, blogging with videos, um, just because, like I said before, I do have a, full-time I do have a full-time job he's married though yeah you see her last name <laughs> um I do have a full-time job or not job but welcome back it's great to see you again loving the long hair don't care his wife pulled up <laughs> I know that's right <laughs> yeah she's supporting the stream and the, the YouTube thing. But uh, I don't know where my brother went. He may have chickened out and left. Oh, there he is. He literally just walked out the locker room. He said, I have to change my pants. It took him 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, uh, the vlogs for, for fitness anyway, probably not just because... Uh, like I said, my full-time thing is home remodeling, which I'm trying to expand on that. It's actually pretty, pretty good already, but, you know, always room for more. Somebody was really short and I was doing squats over here. I want to, as I say, for sure. What supplements you use? What you show them? Um, I've ever had a video, had a comment, guys, legit not text at me. <laughs> yeah. Well, glad you're here. Um, will you share what supplements you use? Honestly, I just use pre workout and sometimes I take protein. Um, my pre workout is. Uh, don't remember the brand. All I did was walked in and I said, y'all got any uh, pre-workout that has zero calories? 
you know, zero carbs, zero sugar, all that kind of stuff. And they're like, that's all of, that's most of our pre-workout. So I was like, all right, what's something that's not too stimulant heavy, but it'll still give me a good, you know, boost, like a focus and energy boost. They recommended something to me and it was watermelon flavored. Now that I think of it, that's racist. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just use that. And then the, the protein I use, I actually just went, I'm not like a supplement snob or anything. I went to Walmart, grabbed some uh, 45. Um, I went to Walmart and grabbed some uh, protein from, you know, their little mini workout section. And I mean, I had 20 grams, 20 grams of protein per scoop. Um, the amount of carbs I like and, you know, low fat, that kind of thing. So that's really all I cared about. I'm like, again, I'm not a supplement snob. I used to be because I used to work for Herbalife or I used to be a distributor for Herbalife. But that was <laughs> that was almost 10 years ago. Actually, no, that was 10 years ago. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna pass you to my brother. Um, reverse the camera, and um, yeah, I'm gonna show you my warm up set, and then we're gonna go to hip flexor stretches, and then I'm gonna show you the serratus anterior stretches. So I'm gonna do the warm up set with my hoodie still on, and as we get warmed up, I'll take my hoodie off. <clears throat> so I put the screen pretty dim. <laughs> Right in my face. Uh, put the screen pretty dim just so it'll save battery. But uh, if you can come like over here -ish, somewhere. And just warning you guys ahead of time, um, I kind of have rituals before my before each set. So most people just, you know, pull up to the weight, slide under, and just lift the damn thing. But I'm kind of a ritualistic lifter. I actually got this is way too long. I actually gotta raise it up. Somebody was short. I'm just playing. I'm saying that and I know I'm short too. My brother who's recording right now, he's six three or something like that. So he makes me look short. Nice, I feel professional now. <laughs> so, got to chalk up everything. Chalk up your hands. Chalk up the middle of the bar for where it's going to sit on your back. Chalk up where my hands are going to go. Then, chalk my back. Because these bars kind of suck. Also, let me know if uh, I should take my headphones out during these sets because I'll be breathing heavy in the mic. We know some of y'all might like that, but <laughs> let me know if it's annoying.
That's it, that's around 30. So, all the other sets, aside from this one, I'm gonna um, do abs right after. That way it's a, basically a superset between squat and abs for the reasons I explained before. But first, I'm gonna show you some hip flexor stretches. And there's really two that I like to do. And if you want to do a set, I can just put the tripod up over here. You want to do a set? So, too short. <laughs> There's a, I'll, you can rack it up right here. There's nobody on that one. <laughs> True. Basically, he's saying that he's too tall for my my uh short rack and he's having to do a squat just to get under the rack to pick it up so yeah let me set this up right here actually there's a bench over here i can set it up on Yo, what's up? You're back. So the uh, this is my brother, by the way. Um, sorry. This thing is wobbly. So yeah, the hip flexion stretches. Oh my god, I need to be further away. The hip flexor stretches. Uh, <laughs> and this is way crooked. I'm a noob. Um, so yeah, really there's just two that I have that I like a lot. One is just, uh, I mean, I don't even know if they have a specific name for it other than hip flex stretch. Um, so it's basically, or lunge, lunge stretch, I guess. So basically you're gonna be back knee on the ground, front foot on the ground, and you're just gonna push into your hips, try to drive your hips into the ground. Um, it's pretty simple. You can, you have different angles, like with you leaning forward or leaning back. I, I like to do it when I have some kind of support with my hands, because what'll happen if you don't have some kind of support for your hands or something to hold on to. Um, say you're trying to do it this way and push your hips. Naturally, uh, scientific reason is muscle spindles. Your muscles, uh, there's, there's something called muscle spindles inside your muscle belly and inside your, uh, your tendons that won't let you stretch too far, too fast. So it'll tighten up basically to prevent, to prevent uh, hyperextension. So um, uh, that's why I like to have my hands on something so that my body doesn't get confused and think that, oh no, something's happening. I got to tighten up real quick. And that's how a lot of people pull muscles too, doing stretching too fast. Um, so yeah, a lot of people think it's actually from uh, the muscle stretching past its elasticity, its maximal point of uh, elasticity, but it's actually because well, that is the case sometimes, but also it can be because um, you're getting close to that point too fast and your muscles involuntarily tighten up and it's too much pressure for the tendon, the attachment to the bone, and then it pulls. Um, so anyway, all that to say, have something to put your hands on. Usually I just put it on the floor. If I have like a bar or something, I'll put my hand on that, but... So the leg that's in the back, I'll put that hand on the floor and just push my hips into the ground. Um, so as well as you, the angle of you leaning forward and backward, also the angle of this hip, both of your hips matters as well. So I can either be more opened up this way or I can be, you know, hips more squared up 
the more squared up you are, the more of the outside leg in the back is going to be stretched. So if I open up like this, it's going to be more uh, adductors. And if I close it up, it'll be more hip flexors and uh, like TFL, tensor, tensor fascia latte. Um, and that's not a drink, by the way. <laughs> uh, the same thing, switch over to the other side. Hand on the ground, push them to your hips. And typically I do, uh, if I'm just trying to stretch to loosen up a little bit. And by the way, I usually only do static stretches post-workout, but I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. Um, but yeah, uh, if I'm doing it just to kind of loosen up a little bit for a workout or something, uh, if something is actually tight, then I'll do it maybe 10 to 15 seconds. If I'm stretching to increase my flexibility overall, then I'll do it for at least 30 seconds. So yeah, that's hip flexors. And then we raise this up. Oh wait, that was one hip flexor stretch, sorry. Um, the other one that I like to do is actually cobra stretch. So pretty simple. Sure, you've all seen it. Oh, my head is right next to his ass right now. Working with a tight space. Not necessarily a tight space, but you know what I mean. Um, so it's just like you're start laying down and then hands or elbows on the floor. And you're just going to push yourself up while trying to keep your hips pushed into the ground. So you're doing two things at the same time. Pushing your hands down into the ground while pushing your shoulders down and your chest up while pushing your hips down into the ground. Now, I'm actually pretty flexible. Most people won't look like this when they do it. I have pretty flexible uh, spine and hip flexors and pretty good there. But for most people, this is going to be a good stretch. Um, so those are my two favorite hip flexor stretches. Um, I'm going to do a set of abs, then a set of squats. And then on my next rest period, I'll do, I'll show you the uh, serenity and cool stretches. So, and this is where I get to heavy breathing. For abs, I like to, I don't do anything too crazy. Let me see if that message said. The guy in the back. Tell the guy in the back to call me. Poor guy. This one, this one right here. <laughs> dude with the hat on I don't know who he is so I ain't talking to him but uh, um, so yeah for my abs I have let's see one one two three four five five ab workouts I typically do first one is just feet flat on the ground Arms crossed, just a military crunch, grabbing your biceps, lifting your shoulder blades up off the ground. I do 20 usually. There's 20. Next one I do, my legs straight out. And I put my hands behind my head. Don't push my head. But this is more for the upper abs. Just an upper crunch. Not, not worrying about coming up off the ground. of those. Then I'll do leg lifts. So actually, I think I do six workouts. Leg lifts, put my hands above my head. Let me just shoot it. So 
drinkers get. And this is where I realize whether I've drank enough water throughout the day, because if I'm dehydrated, this is, where I, this is where I cramp, which I might, but I just flip over and then do my cobra stretch and then go back to it. So I do uh, sliders and uh, Russian twist. I was close. I felt the cramp coming on, but <laughs> I guess I drink enough water. to this, these squats. Let's see what you guys are saying. Oh, the one that was squatting? My brother? <laughs> I'm not here. I'm not here. I'm not here. Give me a gun. Uh, do you usually do this between sets of squats? Yes. Um, I do abs. Well, not all the stuff I just showed, but the ab workouts, yes. I do all those ab workouts between squat sets. So, giving the camera back to my brother. This one I'll probably do round 15. Fifteen was too little. It did twenty.
right. So now we'll go to Swedish interior stretch. So this is actually pretty simple. Um, you could do it on this, like a bar like this. Um, the first one anyway. Kind of requires some kind of horizontal bar or anything you can grab onto. If you can reach the doorway with your feet still being on the ground, do that. I'll do it from this side so you can see. But <clears throat> again, serratus anterior starts right here. These muscles that you can see on your ribs. And then it wraps around your back and goes to this part of your scapula, the medial border of your scapula, top to bottom. So the action that it does, when you think about a muscle action, it's to bring the two ends of the muscle close together. So serratus anterior helps with this motion, protraction of your shoulder blades, bringing everything forward. So it's a good uh, muscle learn how to stretch for people, especially people that work at desk jobs and things like that, where you're, you know, typing between that, that and uh, uh, pecs, uh, anterior delts, that kind of stuff. So the stretch for that first one, like I said, usually you do it with something higher, probably have to be on my knees. Yeah. But basically you're going to relax your arms and you're going to lean into the bar. Now, what you don't actually want to do is relax your shoulders so much that you kind of lean through to where you're doing more of a chest stretch. You want to keep your elbows down. And when you push, you're kind of locking your shoulders uh, or your chest in a position that it is so that you're pushing just your shoulder blades back. And you should feel, if you're doing it right, if you don't feel it, lean, you know, your hips one way or the other until you feel the stretch coming right here and all the way along back. So it kind of takes some playing around with like the angle of my, you're pushing down or you're pushing across. You'll feel it once you hit it, but find that angle and then you'll feel it right in here. So you can do one at a time, both at the same time, whatever works best for you. Um, and the other one that I like to do is actually pretty similar, but it's more of like a reach and reach and bend kind of thing. So you can help pull with the other hand, but you're going to reach up and then pull across like this and then lean your hips the opposite direction as well. So you're here. And then again, you'll feel it all the way around here. You might even feel it in obliques as well. But if you if you feel it more in the side, like at the lats, it just means it's pulling too much to the side. Bring it back some, open it up, and feel that stretch. And pull your shoulder blades back. Same thing on the other side. Lean as much into it as you want, but you'll feel it. So yeah, those are my two. Same, as far as timing, same rules as uh, the hip flexor stretches. If you're doing it for like pre-workout uh, to loosen up a certain muscle, 15 seconds should be good. If you're doing it post-workout to actually increase the flexibility of a muscle, 30 plus seconds. I think I said 15 seconds before. I may have said minutes, but I meant seconds. Uh, oh, it actually reminds me, you guys that were here yesterday I think I accidentally said my wife is, or my youngest son is 11 months old. I meant weeks. So when I was saying she's trying to get back into her pre-pregnancy shape, it's because he's 11 weeks old, not months. But, all right, I'll take this so my brother can do his sets. Nice workout. After I watch this, I'm going to do abs and leg lifts. Hell yeah. Great form. Thank you. Person to be strong as hell. Thanks, man. Hey, brother. What's up, brother? Uh, 
love this workout punches. Hey, thank you. I'm glad I could bring some good content. Whatever I could do to help you guys out. Give you some workout ideas, especially with it being the new year. You guys are motivating me to keep on doing this. Take about a minute and a half to two minute break. I'll do another set of squats. I'm gonna go up to 135 or uh, 315. Oh yeah, where are you guys from? Uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Really, I used to uh, those videos. The very first videos that I posted. We're in uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina. This is good. I love the tips for people who sit at a desk all day. Yeah, I mean, I know that's um, corporate corporate jobs and desk jobs and all that. I know it's probably the majority of jobs today. You know, I will say in America, but pretty much everywhere, corporate world is. Super popular, or corporate jobs, I should say. Georgia, nice. What part of Georgia? No mask. No, they don't require masks here. Just when you walk in the front, but nobody's wearing a mask. You can, obviously, but almost nobody does. <sighs> he keeps talking, but he's shy. He doesn't want nobody to see him. Um, the mask interrupts your believing or your breathing, I believe. North Carolina loves you. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, I agree. I mean, it's a piece of cloth on your face. Obviously, even just putting your shirt over your face is going to be harder to breathe than not having anything over your face. But 
it's a gym. Um, do you compete in competitions? No, I've thought about it in the past, but uh, one of the things that kind of kept me from doing it was the whole having to shave yourself from, you know, neck to toe. And I'm kind of a hairy guy and I, I like my hair, chest hair, all the way down to my toes, even in my butt crack. <laughs> uh, uh, best buns on YouTube. What are you talking about, man bun? Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> uh, thank you. Poor Bragg on Jacksonville, yeah. Cake, cake, oh my God. Georgia, oh nice, two from Georgia. Yeah, and my dad's actually from Noonan, Georgia. If y'all know where that's at, apparently it's not too far from Atlanta. But, yeah. Uh, let me increase his weight to 315. I'm actually going to go grab some water real quick, too. I guess I'll take you with me. I like to walk around. He was saying I could get some water from his, his bottle, but uh, I kind of like to walk around between sets, too. Keep my legs moving. I sit between really heavy ones. Love being in your arms. <laughs> More like hands, but. Um. But yeah, I like to walk around between sets. Just because, uh, yeah, keep moving. Passing you back off. listening to imaginary music in my head to get pumped.
That's usually why I put the bar low. If I squat, put the bar more on my back as opposed to up on my shoulders. Ah, take a breather before I do my hand. Say the question. What's it say? That if you don't compete, just kind of slide, swipe down. But if you don't compete, what motivates you to go so hard in the gym? Body looks perfect. What is that? Uh, if I don't compete, what motivates me? What motivates me to go to the gym? Um, the starters. Having two kids and a wife to um, kind of try to set the standard, or not necessarily set the standard, set the standard, but more like uh, I don't know. I'd rather have the people I love and the people that love me look up to me, as opposed to be like, oh well, you have so much potential in this area. Why are you here? Or, you know, that kind of thing. So what motivates me to go is to motivate the people I love and the people that love me. Um, also, I want to be, I don't know, I kind of have a fear of like getting old. Like I always want to be young, at least physically and in shape, able to run, jump and flip and cartwheel and you know throw my kids around and by the time my kids get in high school they're gonna be wrestlers and athletes and I'm gonna have to fuck them up so I'm not gonna let them steamroll me so <laughs> I'm not actually gonna fuck them up but you know what I mean um but yeah I guess those are the main things now um I read a quote somewhere a while ago. It may have been by one of them smart motherfuckers like Pythagoras or something like that. But anyway, quote was, the gist of it was like, um, in layman terms, in dummy terms, basically saying like, you have this body, you're basically like, uh, your body is kind of like a vessel for your brain or spirit or whatever it is that you believe. But basically your body is just a tool that your mind uses to accomplish certain things. Why not have your vessel be at least once in your life? Why not push it to the limits to see what you can physically do? You know, obviously he's those scholars and philosophers and all that, they're geniuses so they push their brains to the limit, but why not do the same with your body, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, why do it to be average, and I'm not like, by any means, I'm not like some super motivational, like, you know, go kill yourself, you know, do it or die trying kind of person, but with what you're doing, if it's your, you want to take that, um, if it's your passion or if you think it's something that you're going to do for a while, why not go all out and see how good you can be in that thing? So 
for me, I'm kind of lucky because although the gym is actually very physically hard, my or difficult, I should say, I mean, there are hard things in the gym, but uh, physically difficult. Um, for me, I have a really good, I have, I have really good um, mental fortitude when it comes to pain, physical pain. So I can push myself past physical limits easier than a lot of people can. But at the same time, uh, so my big challenge is kind of like uh, anything that requires like focus that is not, that I can't uh, express that focus through a physical, physical activity. Let's turn this around. Um, so for example, for my work, I have to write estimates a lot, write contracts, do uh, modeling, like 3D, like computer modeling, um, all that kind of stuff. And uh, that requires a lot of mental strength and focus in a different aspect. That's what's harder for me. So, yeah, I guess I'm just lucky that this is actually, even though it's hard, it's easy easier for me mentally to do. So. Someone said you interrupted my stream, bro. Answer your phone. Wait, what? <laughs> he said you interrupted my stream, bro. Answer your phone. Goddamn. And the comment before that, though, the guy who said, uh, any, any tips for Paul's water? That's a good question. He's over 6'5". That's true. Let me try to, let me go back to, okay. Uh, how long have you been growing your hair out? About four years. Uh, four years and, so like four years and three months now. But I told this story yesterday. Here's a short version of it. Basically, I grew, I was growing it for four years. Wasn't really taking care of it. Like I was picking it out and moisturizing and all that stuff. And I thought I was good with just that. But apparently you gotta like get trends all the time and use special products and all this crap I didn't want to do and didn't thought I didn't have time for until my mother-in-law went to trim my hair. Let's see if I can clean this camera off a little bit. It's kinda it might just be I don't know. Oh, that made it worse. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, you leaving? All right, bro. Whatever. When I find some, oh, here's a towel over here. Um, but yeah, anyways, I wasn't taking care of it like I should have. And I ended up, whenever my in-law went to trim it, I asked her, um, how much needs to be trimmed off? And basically she was like, you're not going to like this answer. I was like, fuck, what, how much? And it was about five inches. So because I didn't get trims and do all the stuff that I should have been doing along the way, I ended up having to get five inches trimmed off. So essentially it's five inches shorter than it would be if I would have actually been getting trims. Um, let's see. Answered the body uh, competition thing, which thank you, by the way. Any tips for tall squatters? 6'5 over here. Um, levers. So, well, first of all, squatting for a tall person is always going to be harder than it is for a short person, simply because of your leverages. So, because you have, well, not simply because your leverages, leverages and your, your length, like your proportions. Um, because basically you have a further distance to squat, squatting, uh, you know, 215 for you is always going to be harder than squatting 215 for somebody my height, 5'9". So that's the first thing. It's just always going to be, it's always going to be harder uh, overall, but 
as far as tips, um, it's kind of hard to say without actually seeing what your leverages are like because you could have a you could have longer legs, you could have a longer torso, uh, you could be more proportionate evenly between the two. Um, but first thing is knees over your toes is not a bad thing. So if you're trying to squat and your knees are passing over your toes, uh, don't like try to force your butt back to where your knees are behind your toes and you're ending up like folding in half forward. Uh, cause it's not, especially because you're tall, you want to be less bent over. You want to try to be more upright because, uh, bent over as a tall person means a longer distance. The weight is going to be a longer distance away from your midline or from your hips. So again, if I were to squat and go like this, you know, this for, distance from here to here is going to be shorter than you. So you're also going to be picking up a lot more this way. It would be better for you to be able to squat down and have to pick it up straight up as opposed to bending over because that distance is going to be, it's going to, you know, multiply the effort required to lift that weight. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, and it also depends on uh, ankle mobility. So one thing I've, I've kind of noticed is for some reason, taller people don't have as good of ankle mobility just in general. So getting, getting some, uh, uh, Olympic lifting shoes with like a three-quarter inch heel, like a platform shoe with a three-quarter inch lift in the heel, basically, or wedge. Um, that'll probably help you out as well. But just know that using those types of shoes are going to push your knees forward. They're going to make you more upright, but they're going to put your knees forward more, which is going to put more stress on your quads. Um, so... As a taller person, basically, you're going to have to have more upright, upright strength. Um, maybe not so much like bending over, like deadlifting strength. Uh, no, that's not mine. Um, so, yeah. Advice number one, or not really advice, but just thing to know, number one, it's always going to be harder for you than a shorter person. Tip number one, don't worry about knees over toes. Only worry about it if uh, you're actually starting to feel pain or discomfort in your knees. Um, but with that being said, you also don't want to try to squat with your back vertically up. You still want to have your butt. You want to still want to sit back into it, but uh, just try to stay upright. Uh, third thing or a second tip, I guess, would be try to get e either and or uh, work on your ankle mobility and or get uh, Olympic lifting shoes with a, with a lift in the heel. So, and you might start out with like a quarter inch and then if that feels good, you can go higher, half inch up to three quarters. I think three quarters, I think they go up to one inch, but that's pretty extreme. Um, so, yeah.
Actually, I have no idea what time it is right now. I don't have any clocks in here. This place closes at 11. Actually, I'll get to check how long I've been streaming. 88 minutes. Uh, so what's that mean? It's like uh, 10.30. Carolina. Your head looks great. Thanks. Thanks, man. You gotta use the hex bar, right? No, no. You can go ahead and use it. It's all locked in there and shit. Hold on. Fucking tired. Thank you, sir. So with that being said, I guess doing a low bar squat would be better for my proportions. Um, yeah, possibly. Um, again, it depends on what your actual proportions are. Um, it could be better for a taller person because essentially it makes it to where um, your the, the bar is closer to your center of gravity. So basically the, the center of your feet. So you don't necessarily have to, you know, sit back as much or drive your knees forward as much. Um, so you just kind of even, evens everything out for a taller person. My feet always slide when I do crunches. I'm trying to think what actually makes it easier for me to do crunches with, uh, without my feet moving, because same thing used to actually happen to me. My feet used to slide around when I would do crunches, and it might just be, who knows, it might just be because uh, my lower body is pretty heavy, so it kind of uh, sets me in place while my upper body, you know, raises up. It also depends on where you have your hands, too. So if you have your hands down to your sides, uh, it's going to put your weight lower, so Maybe your feet will be more secure if you have a, your hands higher up or like across your chest or anything like that. Um, it's going to be, you're going to have to be lifting. Technically, you're going to be lifting more weight since the uh, you have more weight up high. I put my legs under the weight bench. Yeah, that helps. So that you trap them or grab some dumbbells or kettlebells or something like that. If you didn't have a gym or weights, what would be your main go-to exercises? Hmm. No gym, no weights. First of all, uh, it would be what I used to do actually all the time. Uh, sprints and plyometrics. So number one, because sprints is a full body workout. You're going to be working everything when you do sprints. Um, it's funny, one of the, some of the, act, of the only times when my abs get sore and my hip flexors get sore in a good way, um, and even my shoulders and traps is actually when I do sprints and box jumps. So if you think about a sprint for your abs and your hip flexors and your shoulders and traps, 
it's, you know, the knee drive, lifting your knees up really fast like that over and over and over again. You're basically doing unilateral crunches. Basically, you're doing a crunch on each side of your body really, really fast. Um, that's why one of the main things for running faster is actually having a strong core. Even though you would think like, you know, strong legs or, you know, well, that's, yeah, most people think like strong legs, which definitely that helps. But strong glutes, strong core, even strong shoulders will help you run run faster. So, yeah, that's the main thing, or the first thing. Uh, sprint, and then, like I said, box jumps as well. It's the same, basically the same thing as a sprint like the same motion, except you're doing bilateral, bilateral instead of unilateral. So if you think about, let me put this, set this camera up so I can actually show you what I'm talking about. Um, let me see if that's a good spot. So if you think about a sprint, it's a little crooked. If you think about a sprint, so if you look at one side of my body, or, or I guess cross section of my body, or not really cross section, but you know, diagonally, when you run, you're going one knee up, one shoulder, or one uh, arm up. So you're here, and then you switch here, you switch here, and you're going back and forth and back and forth. And the foot that's in the, the, in the back is kicking your butt. So you're going here while this other foot is kicking your butt. Um, if you think about doing that same motion, but having everything move together. So, you know, arm up, leg up. It's literally the same motion as a jump. So when you jump, you're going arms up and then your knees come up. So you're going arms and knees. Same thing as running, arms and knees. But, like I said, the difference is, with a sprint, you're doing unilateral work, a unilateral workout. So you're working your left side, left leg, right arm, and then you're switching right leg, left arm, switch back and forth. When you're doing a box jump or any type of jump, you're just using both at the same time. Both arms at the same time, then both legs at the same time. I guess I, just, I should say um, both sides of your core, both hip flexors, um, both shoulders, both traps. You know, all your all your muscles, you're using it in sync, <laughs> like at the same time, uh, as opposed to firing at different times. So they're basically, when you think about it that way, it's the same, but uh, just in a different form. Um, so that is, those are the main two. It's going to be sprints and box jumps, because also with sprints and box jumps, you can work different angles um let's well if you're doing a sprint straightforward it's basically just going to be a sprint but if you're doing box jumps you can you know jump to the side to the side you can jump and land forward you can jump and land sideways you can get fancy jump jump and land all the way backwards you can jump backwards you can jump with one leg jump with two legs um jump with no legs if you're a magician uh so there's a lot of different, a lot of different options for those those things. And then again, with the sprints, you can run sideways, run backwards, run forward. Um, you know, pretty much whatever you want to do. So when I actually used to do a lot of track workouts, that would that's what I would do a lot. Um, sprints and box, well, sprints and jumps, not necessarily box jumps, because they didn't have a box. If they had hurdles, I would jump over it. If not, I would just set a distance or set a height and an effort in mind and just constantly try to jump to that level of effort every jump. Um, other than those, uh, the simple, no, well, yeah, no gym, no weights. So it means you might not have access to like a pull-up bar or something. If you can get a one of those pull-up bars that uh, hooks up in your doorway, I think it might be like $20, $25. I'm just guessing. Maybe that's how much they are. But if you can get access to one of those, uh, that'll help with one of the main lifts. Basically, 
the no weight, no weight lifts that I like or that I would prefer or recommend would be pull ups. So underhand or overhand, push ups, uh, whatever hand placement you want, squats. So obviously just, you know, air squats or prisoner squats, pistol, whatever, whatever you want to call them. Um, and then I would say deadlifts, but that usually requires some kind of weight. Uh, but what makes it easier, or not easier, but harder for you to do a deadlift so that you actually can get some resistance is doing single leg deadlifts instead of two legs, whether it's Romanians or uh, actual deadlifts or whatever it be, may be. Um, so yeah, the, ba- the big three, I-, I should say, is pull-ups, push-ups, squats. And with variations of each of those, you're going to be getting, uh, you're going to hit pretty much every muscle. And then when it comes to the core and that kind of stuff, sprints, uh, well, core and fat burning and, you know, calorie burning, co- uh, sprints and box jumps. So with those, like I said, and it's kind of hard to get bored with those two just because there's so many different variations that you can be doing with those. So you can be doing, um, sorry, I'm trying to get this in a good spot. You can do, when it comes to sprints, obviously you have different angles or different uh, directions you can do, different intervals, um, you know, skips and hops and, you know, laterally, forward, backward, with box jumps, all the variations I said before. Uh, with push-ups, different hand placements, different uh, foot placements, different angles. So feet up on a chair, feet down low with your hands up on a bench or something. Uh, With pull-ups, you can go underhand, overhand, wide grip, close grip, alternating grips, um, assisted, unassisted. With squats, there's and a, a variation of squats would actually be lunges. It's just a lunge is just a squat with your feet separated in, in a different plane. Um, so you'd have wide stance, narrow stance, neutral. Um, you can do like a, like a lateral lunge or a squat, whatever you want to call it. You can do an actual lunge, um, jump squats, pause squats, all kinds of different things. So at all, all the variations depends on you're only limited by your your creativity so hopefully that answers your question I'm check the time yeah they're pretty close to me. pretty close to closing uh i guess i've had a long rest time all up the weight to 405 maybe go for like eight or something. Yeah, I might just set myself. My standard pretty high. I don't know if I could do eight, but. Before I do it though, I'm gonna grab some, some more water. Uh-oh, I'm missing a 45. Grab it from this one over here. No, he actually wasn't spotting me before. But since there's nobody here now, I'm actually going to raise this up by one in case I have to drop it. I'm going to grab water really quick. Actually, eh, yeah, I'll leave it here. Uh-oh, music turned off. <clears throat> All right. Check these messages real quick. 
see if I got any. 1041. All right. Got about 15, 20 minutes now. Partridge is built like a gladiator. <laughs> Thank you. That's the goal. Don't hurt yourself. Uh, if I do, you're all my witness. <clears throat> if I do, send the ambulance. My ambulance. No, nah, I'm just kidding. There's, there's people here. They'll help me. But I got this. <sighs> Might be making a lot of noise into the phone, but... Oh, well. <clears throat> Might be a little easier to focus with some music, but that is okay. I think that's the ten minute warning. Last one was bad form, but it was either compromised my form a little bit or potentially shit on myself in the gym. And I choose to have clean pants. <sighs> but don't do that. If uh, it's getting hard to stop, <laughs> don't ego lift like I just did. Point this down so I can lay down for a second. <sighs> but yeah, another reason uh, some of my hand and glutes days, I like to do a lot of lower back exercises. That way, if that happens, that situation where I have to compromise form a little bit. Um, my back is strong enough to where I'm not gonna completely collapse. It may come out of position some, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna fold it. Crumple like a origami swan. But, uh, and I'm not laying down because I'm hurt by the way. 
just trying to get the blood back up to my head, out of my legs. Actually, to be honest, I don't know if I'm hurt yet. <laughs> I don't know when I stand up. But no, I'm actually good. So, and obviously, maybe not obviously, but just so you guys are aware, typically my rest time is a lot less for each uh, between sets. But since I'm here talking to you guys, gives me an excuse to rest longer. But this is educational. So it's more about you guys than it is me anyway. Nah, he hurt. <laughs> when I turn the camera off, I'm gonna limp, limp to my bed and cry, put an ice pack on my back. What's the number of 911? <laughs> we will send an ambulance if you need it. Well, thank you. My little, my guardian angels over there. It's a hardworking man. Thank you. That's right. One thing I've learned from uh, powerlifting, especially, is... It's not necessarily about how many sets you do in the gym or how many how many different uh, workouts you do. Um, so like you don't have to, when you go to the gym, if you go to the gym, if you don't want to do an at-home workout, same concept. But <clears throat> when you work out, you don't have to do like, you know, 15 different exercises <coughs> to work the same muscle group. You can, you can do, uh, you know, two, if you're doing, say you're doing a, a leg day and you're doing, you're focusing more on quads, you can do, well, either one quad dominant lift like I did and then some accessory work, or you can do like two quad dominant lifts. So maybe squats and leg extensions or leg extensions and lunges or whatever it is you want to do. But it's not, it's not necessarily about how many sets you do uh, or how many different workouts you do. One thing I've learned for sure is it's about the intensity during each set. So for example, I see a lot of people in the gym that do a lot of sets, but each set that they do is like, after they're done, I'm looking at them, I'm like, you could have easily gotten five, ten more reps out of that. Like, why are you doing so little each, each set, but doing, you know, 20, 30, 40 sets per workout when you could be doing, pushing yourself harder for each set but doing less sets per workout, which is actually gonna make you stronger, it's gonna increase your muscular endurance, and it's gonna make your workout shorter. So, but everybody work, workouts for their own thing. Some people work out here to, as a therapeutic thing, which is definitely okay as well. I'm not saying you have to lift the way that I say to lift, but um, yeah. Don't I know there's a lot of Instagram Instagram is ten fifty two. Oh damn, I thought it was closer to eleven. I'll probably I'll actually uh oh there's somebody on leg extensions. Um let me see if he's getting off or if he's putting more weight. I don't know if he's putting more weight. Mm -hmm. Well let me unrack my weights. Maybe by that time he'll be getting off it. Whoops, I just pulled one of the legs off of this tripod. 
Um, if not, I'll see if I can work in with him for a set or two. Um, my knees are wobbly. Um, yeah, I forgot what I was saying. <clears throat> oh yeah, the intensity of each set as opposed to doing a really long workout. Um, if, if you go to the gym to do long workouts, that's perfectly fine. But if you go to the gym to reach your goals quickly and efficiently, I will say it's the harder thing to do, but pushing harder for each set and each rep, doing more, doing more reps each set, or not necessarily more reps, but uh, putting a weight on to where you're pushing yourself toward failure, toward or at failure each set. Uh, well, you don't necessarily want to go to failure each set, but you need to have a couple sets in each workout where you're basically pushing yourself to your limit because that's what's going to that's probably five minute one. Um, because that's what's going to change your body. If you're doing workouts and you're pushing yourself till you're a little uncomfortable and then you stop the set, like kudos for getting in the gym and pushing some weights. But if you really want to make a change, you really want to look like a gladiator, as y'all say. Um, you got to push yourself past that point and find out really what your body can actually do. Because that's where, once you start doing that on a consistent basis, you're going to be making gains and you're going to like, I mean, strength gains really quickly, but you're going to make physical gains. Like looking in the mirror, you're going to notice different a difference in all that stuff. You're going to be making changes so quickly. You're going to be like damn, I didn't realize this is what it took. And it's going to be hard for that day, but in the long run, it's going to be easier because you're going to make, get results faster. So, yeah, I got five minutes. And they're still on leg extension. And I think there might be another one over there. I could probably get a set. Um, but yeah, so again, not that kind of, not that kind of coach, not that kind of super, you know, hardcore motivator. That's like, I mean, I was in the Marine Corps, but it's different. Um, I'm not gonna, you know, call you a piece of shit for not pushing as hard as you could and all that kind of stuff, like, just go harder. If you have more in the tank, even if it's just your last set of the day, even if you get in the gym and you're like, damn, I'm really not feeling it. You know, because I have those days too where I get in the gym and I'm like, oh man, this is a bad idea. I don't know if I want to be here right now. When you have those days, still do a workout, but do a shorter workout and push yourself. Do a shorter workout, but also push yourself harder for each set. So even if you get in the gym or you start doing your workout wherever you're at and you're like not feeling it, not really wanting to be there, give yourself five minutes to warm up do some, some light warming up, five minutes, whatever muscle group you were going to work that day, 
five minutes of warm up. And then just do one set. One set as hard as you can. And then, then I said then twice. And then, uh, you know, that's it. Mission accomplished. At least you could say, even if you didn't go as long as you could have, you could say you went as hard as you could have in that short, amount of, short period of time. So, and you don't need to have some ulterior motive. Like, I'm not trying to say, I'll do that. And then you never know. You might feel motivated to do more. Like, no, just that's what you want to do. Let that be it. And then be happy with yourself. Be satisfied that you had a successful day of working out because you pushed yourself as hard as you could, even if it was just for one set or two sets or three sets or however many you wanted to do. Just do that. And actually, it kind of goes with um, uh, strength training philosophy. Um, when I when I gained the most strength in the shortest shortest period of time, uh, she's calling out that we're closed, or they're closed, I should say. Um, when I gained the most strength in the shortest period of time, I was actually doing. I was working out four times a week, four days a week. Um, basically, one muscle group each of those days. So, like, Monday was squat day, Tuesday was bench day, Thursday was deadlift day, and then Friday was another bench day. But for those leg days, I was doing basically not just one muscle group, one, uh, one lift. So, like, squats on Monday. And I would do basically four sets. Oh, no, five sets. Three warm up sets. Okay. Three warm up sets. And then an AM rep set at a heavy weight. Basically, as many reps as I can do at that weight. And then the next set is a drop the weight a lot and just get like a nice cool down. And that's all that was required for that entire day. But the thing that mattered was that AMRAP set where uh, you get that if you do some hard leg workouts. Um, thing that mattered was uh, that one set. That one set of, uh, you know, that AMRAP where you're doing as many reps as you can in that one set and uh, you pushing yourself past your limit like that is what's actually going to get you strength gains. So <laughs> that was huge that way. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm trying. Um, leaving here now. Hopefully I'm not... Leaving anything. Feel my headphone case. I'm sure everything else is in there. <laughs> See ya. Oops. I'm supposed to wear a mask walking out, but this is the beautiful view that I walk out to. <clears throat> It's just trees and shit. There's some lights in the tower, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Kansas, it ain't all cornfields, though. Now I'll go five minutes west, and then it will be. But that's a different story. You do that with your shirt, too? <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically the same thing. <clears throat> I know you're cold. Actually, I talked about it a little bit yesterday, but I'm not actually. Uh, I'm very resilient in the cold. Uh, partially due or partly due to stubbornness. But also because I, I know I talked about uh, Wim Hof yesterday a little bit. Let me see if I can get my camera set up somewhere. 
It's not like weird. Let's see if I can finesse this tripod somehow. And now you're just looking at my steering wheel. Uh, and I remembered I have this light. So, a fucking bright ass light I used yesterday. Oh, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I can't see anything now. I just look directly in it. Let me turn my... Sorry. I'm going to turn my brightness up. Um, let's see where I can put this. Right here, maybe? Let's see if this works. I'm going to put you, like, up in the corner. Maybe this will work. I'm going to figure this out. I need to get one of those uh, suction cup ones. Either that or, yeah, or that. That's literally what I was about to say. One of those vent clip ones. This is actually <clears throat> not bad. Let's see. Every time I tilt it up more, it slides a little bit more. So. Sticking one of my legs and uh, clip on the other thumb. Yeah, I should probably get one. This ain't too bad. Let's see if it falls off. That's your Christmas gift. Maybe do some brakes, brake checks. Hey, that's not bad. I'll just leave the slide on. on my face. Looks like a story time now. Spooky stories. Put a piece of paper towel over it. So it's not like so much more of a dull light instead. Hopefully it doesn't blind me. Maybe I should put another paper towel. <laughs> I just want you to be able to see my face. But once I get this set up, this is just what I'll do from now on. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. You can see me at least. That's cool. And then, yeah, that's not bad. I'm enjoying this live video. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad I can provide some some content. Now, I'm not sure, but I think at some point this camera's going to fall. <clears throat> Hopefully not, but I think it's going to be a thing. So, just wanted you ahead of time. This is not a suction cup or clip-on stand. It's just I have one of the legs of the tripod sticking into the vent. Seems kind of stable for now. But, yeah, one leg in the vent, one leg sticking straight back, and then one kind of just pressing on the face of the, the dash. But, and luckily, this, uh, this light that I have has a really good battery in it. When I used it yesterday for that, I mean, it was only like two hours on the low setting. Believe it or not, that was the low setting. Um, but I had it on there for about two hours yesterday, and uh, it was still completely full. So pretty good battery on this light. Uh-oh, I can't accelerate uphill too hard. It will definitely fall. But yeah, I'm glad you guys stopped by again today. Not saying that I'm going to end the stream right now, but it's uh, appreciative that more people stuck around or that you you original, you OGs from yesterday. <laughs> I guess technically everybody who's here for the next like month or so is going to be OGs, but you like five that were there yesterday or the 
OG OGs. Um, those Kansas potholes. Uh oh, now well, the camera's turning the other way. Don't get pulled over for having that light on. I thought that was a myth. I actually don't think you can get pulled over for having a light on. I mean, you probably can if they think it's a, a phone. Like you're holding the phone up to, like, you know, texting or something. But um, if I do, I mean, I got this on stream. I'll just keep it streaming. Hopefully the cops don't shoot me. Because <laughs> this is Kansas. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just playing. It ain't that bad out here. Um, but, oh, yeah, there's a cop right there. We'll see if I get pulled over. I was scratching my lips, so it may have looked like I was talking on the phone. But uh, they're not pulling out. So probably eating some donuts or something. No, I'm just playing. I don't really see how that's an insult, honestly. I love donuts. They better leave you alone. Huh? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> they're going to have... 14 people to, to answer to if they do they do something to me but um, yeah I don't actually think uh, even like having this light on which I tried to use that one yesterday but uh, or I was going to but it was just that one was a little too obvious this one is at least down low to where they may not see the source of the light directly, but they might see that they'll probably see the light illuminating on my face. Um, but like I said, I'm streaming. So if anybody does pull me over and they want evidence that I'm not texting or something, I got a two hour long stream so far. But they can go to the tapes, and check it, see that I'm not texting. Sorry for the off-centered camera. Try to fix it. Although you're not even you're not steering well too. But yeah, and the roads out here aren't the greatest, especially after after winter. What are you eating tonight, Partridge? I already ate actually. Um, I ate before the gym. Uh, my, if they do come, just jump across the border to Missouri. <laughs> I am really close. Back where I was before, I was about, mm, I'm going to say eight minutes from Missouri. But, yeah, so I'm really close. I'm actually, actually from Missouri. I think my YouTube, actually, my, my description or whatever might actually still say Kansas City, because that's where I'm from. But, I'm right across, right across the, uh, right across the border now, um, in Shawnee, Kansas. So, but yeah, uh, I ate, man, I wish I would have brought some water in here. I need to keep water in my truck. Actually, I do have that water bottle down there, except that water bottle has been in there, been in here for a couple weeks. I actually use it for not drinking water. I use it for, like, uh, if I need to rinse something off, like a dirty tool or something like that, and I don't have, like, quick access to water, I'll use that that uh, NFL-type Gatorade bottle thing to, uh, you know, wet it down or rinse it off, whatever you want to call it. Wet it down. Rinse it off. That was weird. Um, but... That white car is stopping you. Yeah, he has been there for a while, huh? <laughs> I was actually just looking over there. Oh, he probably, he might see my camera up there. Hey, Miles, thanks for the description. The illustration is much appreciated. Yeah, no problem. If y'all got more for tomorrow, um, tomorrow I'll be doing, let's see, Thursday. Uh, I'll be doing... chest and tries so 
I will say tonight, though, I'm going to have to end my stream a little early, probably midnight at the latest. So I got about another hour in me, but uh, midnight at the latest because uh, I want to try to get a little computer work in and then go to bed before like 2.30. <laughs> so that the lane that I was that or the part that I'm driving on right now, it was a three lane. But it's, actually, I'm going to show you this. This, this is kind of cool. They have, uh, I know my camera's probably dirty. But uh, they're Christmas lights. I mean, uh, snowflakes on each side of the road. And I drive past down this little, this little mini highway thing. Um, yeah, it's just a little, a little festive thing that they got going. I actually don't know if that's my camera that's blurry or if it's uh, my windshield. Most likely my windshield because it's a work truck. And I don't know the last time I cleaned the inside of my windows. But actually, if you see right down the center of the, uh, right down the center of the screen, on the left side, it looks more blurry than the right. And that's just because that's where the windshield wiper path is. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I know they have tools where you can, you know, it has the shit or the uh, little flexible neck thing that you can wipe your inside of your, uh, of your uh, uh, front windshield down. But I'd rather just pay somebody to do it. What was that last comment? Um, what's your ID, IG? And do you have any coaching? So I don't actually have Instagram right now. Um, like I said, I'll probably get it in well, within the within the month. Um, so I guess I could turn this camera around. Um, probably get it within the month. Um, towards me, so I can start posting on there, and I know that's actually kind of better for better for fitness stuff than Facebook is, anyway. But um, yeah, whenever I do, if the the tag Partridge Fit or Partridge Fitness is still open from last time that I made my Instagram. I'll just do that again. Um, what was that last one before that? Speaking of food, do you recommend eating before or after working out? Uh, so, basically, I do intermittent fasting. So, uh, I do, I actually do both. It depends on what time I go to the gym. I don't really fall too much into the, um, uh, what time you eat is really important type thing. Like if you eat really late, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, but I think your eating window is what's more important. So if you start eating, and this is me, if you start eating really early in the morning and then you eat until minutes before you go to bed, I think that's not the best thing for you. But if you start eating, if you're going to, if you know you're going to eat late, start eating later. So I can't do, uh, I can't eat early because I know I like to eat later in the day or in the evening, I should say. So, and this took, this took time to get my eating window down to uh, basically two hours now. Man, this thing is hot. Um, so yeah, basically my eating window is down to two hours uh, per day, which is basically one sitting, one sitting, one meal. Uh, one long meal, but still one meal. 
Um, but yeah, um, as far as before or after, it, it for me it depends on a couple things: what I'm going to do in the gym, what that day is going to be like, uh, just in general, so work and workout, and uh, what time I wake up, what time I'm going to go to sleep. Some days I get hungry earlier. Um, but on a day like today, where I'm doing legs, I typically like to eat before I work out because I forgot I grabbed chapstick for this reason. I keep licking my lips. Um, let's see if I can find it. Oh, that was easy. Um, but yeah, like a day like today, where I do, where I did uh, legs, I typically eat before I work out. So I'll eat at, I worked at at nine. I'll eat at um, <clears throat> six or seven. If I start at six, I'll end at eight. If I start at uh, seven, I'll eat basically like until 30 minutes before I go to the gym. Uh, that way my food can have a little time to settle. Um, but yeah, leg days before I, before I go to the gym, just so I can have some more energy or not have that like weak feeling while I'm in the gym. Um, and then other days where it's going to be less less uh intense per se but more uh it's kind of hard to explain so my leg day workouts are high intensity so each set is really high intensity but i don't do as many sets when i do legs because my main goal for them is strength so i do less sets but really high intensity per, per set um when I do upper body, it's a little bit of a different story. I still try to do kind of high intensity, but I'm more focused on, because they're not as big of muscle groups, I have to do a little more to burn as many calories. So I focus a little more on higher reps and a little more uh, higher number of sets. Um, but if I'm going to be doing a workout that's more like calorie, uh, more focused on caloric expenditure than I can eat afterward because I like to have the food in me for workouts that um, are really high intensity just so I can have the energy and not get lightheaded and all that kind of stuff for each set. But if it's, uh, like I said, a workout where I'm just, it's more uh, volume, then I can hold off until after I go to the gym. Um, but usually those days I tend to go to the gym a little bit earlier. That way I can get done at the gym around, uh, eight, nine ish. And then I'll, uh, eat as soon as I get home. So yeah, as far as time, times eating, honestly, I wouldn't really worry about it too much unless it's just like completely shotgun, random, you know, random times of the day. Um, or really spread out throughout the day. If you're going to be eating really late, plan for that. If you can, plan for it, and then um, start eating later to where you have your, your eating is kind of in a more condensed window uh, as opposed to just eating throughout the entire day. Um, whether that be uh, you know you're not going to be able to eat later throughout the day and you need to eat earlier, try to eat eat as much as you can. Well, not as much as you can, but try to get it in that window. Or if you know you're going to be up late, working late, uh, doing whatever late, try to keep it or push your starting time back to where your, uh, your total window is smaller. Um, let me pull that to my driveway here.
So let's see if I actually need this light on this time. Probably looks better with it. <clears throat> but um Since you do intermittent fasting, do you, do you believe in cheat meals or is everything more of a moderation approach for you? Yeah, I live like 20 minutes from the gym. Um, damn, why'd you turn off so fast? I guess I need the key in the <clears throat> Uh um, Wait, what was that question? Bad memory. Uh, oh yeah, yes I do. I believe in cheat meals. Um, so I think it's actually, I don't think you should have them too frequently. And by too frequently, I mean I typically have one cheat day a week, which for me, a cheat day. My light keeps turning off. Yeah, it'll work. Oh, I'll just actually turn this down. There we go. Um, for me, a cheat day is actually basically a cheat meal because even on my cheat days, so basically, uh, seven days of the week, well, every day of the week, because there are only seven days, every day of the week I do, um, um, intermittent fasting. Some days I make the window, that might be too much. That's fine actually, I guess. Some days I make the window uh, larger, that's the correct word, um, but I'll have, I'll, I'll keep it within eight hours every day. So um, most days I'll do two hour window max. And then I'll have a cheat day where I do basically an eight hour window because that's technically the max that you can do for intermittent fasting. Um, anything more than that, I think is considered not fasting, just like a normal day of eating um, or intermittent fasting anyway. Uh, so yeah, on my cheat days, I'll have an eight hour window. Um, but I'll still, I'll have, I'll have a cheat meal in the cheat day. Um, and it's just, you know, I wouldn't say whatever, but I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing because, because, uh, getting in shape or not necessarily getting in shape, but staying in shape and having it be a sustainable thing. It's kind of more of a lifestyle than a goal to reach. You know, something that you can get to, but also you want, the goal is to maintain that into infinity. Um, so with my cheat days, I usually have a cheat meal, but with my cheat meal, it's not something that's like ridiculously unhealthy to where I'm like regretting it the next day. It could be something that's maybe a lot more calories than I would usually eat. Or maybe uh, more fat than I would usually consume or whatever it may be. Um, but typically it'll be something like, I don't know, like a pizza or, you know, burgers or something like that. Um, something that's not necessarily typically within my normal diet, quote unquote. But it's also not something that's like, you know. Two dozen of two dozen fucking Krispy Kreme donuts, or you know something like that. I try not to get like fly. I try not to fly off the rails. I ate Pizza Hut and brownies yesterday. <laughs> oh, so you ate Pizza Hut and brownies while watching me work out? That's fucked up. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of weird. I don't really, I don't really like chocolate. So I like blondies which I actually just learned what blondies are like a month ago. And I wish I hadn't learned because they're too fucking good. But um, so yeah, to answer your question, yes, I do like 
cheat meals. Um, let's turn it up a little bit. There we go. Um, I do believe in cheat meals. Uh, just try if you are gonna have cheat meals and have it be a something that's yet you use normally in your routine. Um, try to do it to where you're not like setting yourself back. You don't want it to be four two steps back two steps or four two steps back three steps or anything like that. It should be more like forward progress, forward progress, forward progress, and then a cheat meal, like just halt for a second and then get back to your forward progress and then halt for a second with a cheat meal. And what's funny, what you actually might notice, uh, depending on your level, uh, if you do try intermittent fasting, depending on your level of uh, like how condensed your window is, sometimes you might actually notice that a cheat meal will be actually beneficial for you. So that may have actually been what your question is or was. Um, I think cheat meals are a good mental tool to kind of give you some relief from depending on what type of diet you're doing, which by the way, I don't typically actually diet. Um, I just eat what I eat, what my wife makes me, but she preps food for the week, puts most of it in the freezer, uh, is intermittent fasting between meals, uh, (laughs) <laughs> depends on when those meals are if you mean from like between breakfast and brunch or breakfast and lunch <laughs> then no that's not fasting that's just waiting <laughs> typically intermittent fasting is maximum maximum window uh of eight hours so if you're if you're eating within eight hours or if you if the like throughout the day from the time you start eating to the time you stop eating, if it's eight hours or less, technically that's intermittent fasting. Now, the, the smaller you have your window, <clears throat> generally it uh, works better with a smaller window or your results are, and it depends on the body too, your, or your body type and your um, somatotype and all that. But um for some people, a smaller eating window gives them better results, which is why I typically have a pretty condensed eating window. Because for me, I find that with a smaller eating window, it helps me to burn fat while actually still uh, building strength at the same time. So I know everybody, a, a lot of people search for that uh, kind of Goldilocks effect of um you know being able to burn fat and build muscle at the same time which for the longest time people were like oh it's not possible you have to do it in you know phases you have to build muscle and then cut and then bulk and then cut and bulk and cut when really that kind of fucks up your metabolism and um it's not really good for it's not really good for you mentally either um just because i don't know when you bulk, it's kind of like you when you go through each phase you're kind of gaining something but you're losing something at the same time so for example in a bulk you might be like oh man i'm stronger i'm stronger than i've ever been um moving all these heavy weights and all this kind of stuff but when i look in the mirror i look fluffy and i feel soft and then you're like, oh, man, all right, I'm going to cut. And then you cut, and you're like, damn, man, yeah, I look a lot better. I'm leaner than I was, and I'm starting to, you know, trim up and all that kind of stuff. But now I feel weak. So most people that you talk to, especially, like, even the bodybuilding industry and competitions and all that kind of stuff, they'll <clears> – <throat> they kind of – they have to make sacrifice. They have to make a sacrifice in each phase. So either you're – as they'll say, that either you're fluffy and strong or you're lean and weak, which I don't think it has to be that way. With And for me, with intermittent fasting, it has made it to where I can be lean and strong at the same time without having, without having to sacrifice any 
strength uh, while I'm getting leaner. So, yeah, last time I checked my body fat, which was, I can't remember if it was yesterday or two days ago. I think it was yesterday. Um, I was at like 6.86% body fat. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm still strong. I feel strong anyway. So I'm not really worried about uh, losing any strength or anything like that. So, yeah, that's what what works for me. I saw another message in there. Sorry, I'm not trying to uh, ignore anybody. Chris Mirage says, hi from San Antonio, Texas. Hope you're uh, having a great day. Any recommendation? Any recommendations of dieting? I've started, but I started to eat more uh, salads and fiber cereal. I hope I'm doing okay. Well, hello, San Antonio, Texas. Um, <clears throat> my day was pretty good. Uh, recommendations for dieting? <sighs> that's that's kind of a hard question, just because I don't know what you, I mean, even down to like what you like to eat, um, what your, if you have food allergies or, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. But basically one thing I like to tell people when it comes to diet is pick something and stick to it. You can be vegan, you can be pescatarian, you can be uh, do carnivore diet, you can do whatever you want to do, but um, first thing, just know that there is no, there are diets that work better for each individual, like for me, maybe being a vegetarian might work better than being a carnivore, when for the next guy, it might be the opposite. Um, I would say find something uh try not to find something that's like too restrictive so if you have a lot of things that you like to eat um this light's kind of in a weird spot it's casting weird shadows on my face this one kind of makes me look like i'm evil like my eyebrows are like <laughs> what about this uh, oh, fucking hell. We'll get this eventually. And y'all can laugh and make fun of the time when I used to mess around with my lights. And... <laughs> yeah, the weird shadows. That might be good. That's not bad. That's directly at my face. He's going to lower my steering wheel a little bit. Okay, that was like an inch. <laughs> this thing ain't moving. Anyway, uh, what did that say? 6% I'll be happy with 10 or 15% body fat. Hey, man, you can get there. It's, shoot, for some people it's more of a, it's, it's harder than others, but I know for a fact you can get there. The, actually, my brother that was doing the video in the beginning of the stream, like the fir first hour, um, man, I'll, uh, I'll see if I can find like some, well, I'll get his permission first, but I'll see if I can find some like before and afters. Yeah. He's not blood brother, but yeah, it's my brother. Um, hello. Yes. That was my question. Thanks for the advice. Uh, oh, talking about the, yeah, yeah. I jump around a lot too, guys, by the way, I like, I have ADD. And it's hard for me to focus on one thing, um, but yeah, to the to the question about the the diet. So no, I don't actually have any diet that I would recommend over another diet, but um, I would definitely say find something that, like I said, is not too restrictive. You don't want to do something that's cutting out every single thing that you love. So if you love, um, like. I don't even know what you love, but if it's, if it, if you look at a diet and it's like, you can't eat this, 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 and this, and you're going to, and you're like, oh, well they say it gives great results, but I feel like I'm going to be miserable. Fuck it. I'll just try it. Don't do it because you're going to be miserable and it's not going to be sustainable, especially if it cuts out 
everything that you like. Now, with that being said, if the only thing that you like is Twinkies, then that's that's a different that's a different story. <laughs> um, be you know, be reasonable. Uh, you probably know what's unhealthy for you. Um, I think everybody has a little bit of common sense, at least a little bit of common sense. I'm trying to say with um, what's what's healthy and what's not. Um, I sometimes take my lunch and I forget to eat my lunch. I guess the universe is making me fast. Yes, I'm spiritual. <laughs> I mean, you might try fasting. That's one problem I had too. Forgetting, forgetting to. Oh, you're gonna work out. All right, man. It was good. Good to have you back here again. Oh wait, is that what you're trying to say that you're gonna leave? I had two tonight. I'm gonna work out though. Oh, I think you're just trying to say that you're going to work out. So okay. Wait, two what? Wine coolers? Is that what you said? No, oh, wine coolers help it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, work that off then. Um, but yeah, if you that's one problem I had was uh forgetting to eat a lot just because uh whether I got too busy or um just forgot about it or whatever the case may be, I'm not really I'm not like a I don't really like rely on food or anything like that very much. Like it's easy for me to forget to eat. Um, as long as I'm occupied doing something else. So fasting might be an easier choice for you. It's not necessarily a diet. It's more of a eating regimen. Um, you'll still have to find out what type of diet, if you want to actually do a diet, which you don't necessarily have to just, uh, maybe restrict certain types of foods that you know are terrible for you. Um, but uh, oh, I think that's my brother right now, actually. I know the sound of that car. Um, yeah, I'm like 95% sure that's him. And yes, it is. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, saying i got distracted <laughs> what was the question oh yeah um you might try you might try uh intermittent fasting it might actually work for you and um especially if you know you find days where you're actually forgetting to eat you either eat uh have a it have a window in the morning where you just eat more but then you fast until the next day, until the next morning, or save your food for later in the day, maybe after you work or later on in the day during work or something like that. Uh, have a smaller eating window, eat later, and then fast through that night and then the rest of the next day until you get back to that window again. Um, so yeah, you might you might try it out, see how it works for you. Um, but yeah, wine coolers. Uh, you know that's not. You know that what I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> um, I think that was the only question. Oh yeah, my brother. That was uh, not my blood brother, but yes, that's my brother. What was the other question? Yeah. So, yeah, find something that's a uh, find something that you're going to be able to do consistently and stay on for a long period of time. Uh, do the military teach you discipline, or you had it before? Uh, both. Um, Military taught me discipline in different aspects that I didn't have. So, uh, specifically, before the military, I like um, 
I, you know, made my bed, cleaned up every day, uh, did did those like small tasks that you just either you're either you're taught, you know, to do it growing up, and then it just becomes habitual, and you just do it, or not. Um, so I guess, you know, discipline in those areas, like that I, certain things that I, uh, do. And then just with growing up, uh, like working out and that kind of stuff, I didn't necessarily work out when I was a kid, but obviously playing outside, um, well, being outside all the time, uh, doing that kind of stuff, it kind of just set me up for being more active later on in life. Uh, my parents got me in martial arts when I was a kid, uh, did that pretty much, you know, forever, since forever ago, since, uh, I think kindergarten. Um, but then just went through different sports and all that kind of stuff. So when it comes to the physical discipline, uh, I think that's kind of, that was more of a trained thing, like trained sense uh, since childhood, basically. So it's not, it, it wasn't anything that I had to learn in the military because I already had it. Now, with other things like uh, consistency for work and holding myself accountable and being responsible and those kind of things, I would say the military definitely helped me with those things. So, not trying to go too deep into it, but basically growing up, I grew up actually really poor. Um, parents were divorced when I was, I think, first grade. I'm trying to remember exactly when. It was either kindergarten or first grade. Uh, but they got divorced then, um, and it wasn't anything yours too. Yeah, that kind of seems to be a thing with our, with our generation. I'm assuming you're somewhere between 25 and 40. Uh, but yeah, divorce is <clears throat> on the rise. Daddy was, was abusive. Damn. <sighs> That's hard. That's shitty. 57? Oh, never mind. Well, you're, uh, I guess it's still always has been a thing and always will be a thing. But I know now it's even uh, even on the rise more now. But um, yeah, grew up pretty poor. Um, well, not pretty poor, really, really poor. Um, but my mom, so my mom had us. I have three, well, obviously she had us, but I'm saying she had custody of us. Um, we had, or I, I had three brothers well, three blood brothers, uh, an adopted sister, and then this brother um, that you just saw in the video, uh, three stepsisters, and yeah. But basically, I grew up with the three brother, three blood brothers and adopted sister. Um, <clears throat> Mom had us, she got custody when we were, you know, as soon as we got divorced or whatever. Um, but she ended up, I was, like I said, I was maybe kindergarten or first grade. We, before, when they were together, we kind of lived in mm, probably, I'd say, lower middle class neighborhood. Um, but then whenever they got divorced, my dad stayed in the neighbor, same neighborhood. My mom moved. She had to move to somewhere where she, uh, cost, of li cost of living was a lot lower. So she moved to the, moved her and us all to the ghetto really, really poor uh, part of town and um, lived with her basically until high school, then moved out uh, with my dad. But uh, I don't actually remember where I was going with this. <laughs> but yeah, so that's how. Oh, yeah, yeah. Talking about the uh, military thing. Yeah, growing up, we never really we were never taught like, you know, the value of the dollar and how to work hard and how to be on time and how to be responsible and this and that kind of stuff. Um, not knocking my mom or anything or either of my parents, but 
It's just, uh, you said you were there too. Yeah. Yeah, when you live in the ghetto, it's uh, certain things are like, you know, luxuries, like learning about money and how to make money and how to do taxes and all that kind of stuff. Like that's a that's a luxury. Most people don't think about it, but that's a luxury that uh, middle class or upper upper middle class or the more well off people have the time and the even education to know about to teach their kids about and so on and so forth. Um, we never learn anything about that because it's not part of the system. Part of the system isn't to educate you know the poor people on how to manage their money better. It's more. I'm tr- I'm not trying to get political, but. It's just not, that's not um, how it's set up. It's not set up to where you're at the bottom, you easily get out. It's, you know, a lot easier. It's a lot easier to be born into money and to stay, keep your family money and, you know, stay in money than it is to be born poor and work your way out of the ghetto. And as a matter of fact, it's extremely hard and uh, unlikely that, people that are born in poverty get out of poverty um let's see parents can only do what they knew how to do i know that from leon van zant i know that last name Van van zant but i don't know who that is but yeah yeah i mean if all you know if all you know is poverty <clears throat> all you know is being broken not having you know not knowing if you're gonna have uh food the next day having to eat, you know, a can of corn for dinner. Um, life coach Leon, I'll check her out. See what, see what that's about. If that's a girl, I'm just assuming that, but I'll check them out. Um, but yeah, if you're, you know what you know, you can't, you can't know. It's like an unknown unknown. I don't know if y'all watch Pulp fiction or anything, but and no, 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 no. Like you don't, you don't know what you don't know that you don't know. You know what I mean? So you don't know how to start learning about something that you don't even know exists. Like there are some things that poor people know exist; they just don't have it. But there are also things that they don't even know that they don't know. And with that, it's like that's just how a lot of things are. Like you don't even know how. Uh, impoverished you are if everywhere you look everybody's broke <clears throat> she's the fix my life lady from tv uh, okay but um yeah you don't know how bad you actually have it if everywhere you look it's you know you're seeing everybody else like you you're seeing everybody's broke nobody you know you talk to your neighbors and everybody's laid on their rent everybody's can't pay their bills you know we actually used to go next door and boil water in our next door, in our next door neighbor's uh, stove. And then we would, we would have like maybe one or two utilities on at a time. So if we chose water, we'd fill up the tub with water, bring a pot, bring it next door, boil it, pour it in the tub. And all of us would, you know, take turns, uh, taking a bath all in that same water. My mom went last uh, just so we could have cleaner water. But I mean, when you when you when you're raised like that you don't even know that it's not normal and you shouldn't people shouldn't be living like that like i don't know it's a hard thing and it's hard for me now because i've seen both sides um i live in a nice neighborhood now um i wouldn't say upper class but upper middle um and being out here nobody not i don't think a single one of these people even know what it's like to be poor they don't know what it's like to have to struggle like that you know not you know not being able to pay bills or not knowing where your next meal is going to come from and it's like you want to be like like you want to like beat it into their head like this is you know this this shit goes on but at the same time it's the same thing for them there are unknown unknowns like They don't know what they don't know. So it goes both ways. And that divide, I think, is where is where it's uh, what's wrong with with everything now. 
but there needs to be more more unity in the in the middle i think but man this went from a fitness channel or from a fitness stream to a political economic socioeconomic stream <laughs> let's talk about some more fitness stuff i actually got a uh, five minutes left so first of all before before it ends i'll say thank you to everybody who tuned in and you know watched the stream and everything it really does mean a lot honestly i thought i thought starting out i was gonna have like maybe one person and it was gonna be my mama watching me or something um thank you yeah, you're welcome and thank yeah for real thank you guys but uh yeah i thought i was gonna tune in and you know see like a brother watching me or something or you know maybe one or two people but i got i think i got up to at one point there were like 12 people yesterday it was pretty consistently like five um today it was pretty consistently around 10 10 to 12 um so yeah that's awesome that's more than i was expecting to be honest but um this was so much fun to see you back at it hey thanks man love your channel thank you i'm glad i'm glad there are people that like uh will take the time out of their day you know from from what you guys are doing to you know watch me and live live life with me i guess you could say walk in my shoes for a minute but i hope you guys if anything i hope you guys get some uh some inspiration and some motivation from watching me work out i hope you i hope you uh learned a thing or two if you're not learning anything then it's kind of you know, I'm not doing my job well enough. So if there's anything I could be doing differently, then you let me know. I'm trying to find out how to better serve you guys. <laughs> uh, definitely enjoyed this live vlog. Thank you. Um, I'm glad you did. I'll be doing, I'll be doing <clears throat> definitely more. So my plan is, um, my plan is five uh, Monday through Friday streaming in the gym and then maybe doing like an hour after the gym because uh, the gym usually closes at uh, 11 my time, central time. So probably <clears throat> from nine, nine to 11 in the gym and then 11 to noon, which is about 20, drive, 20 minute drive home and then, you know, 40 minutes here in the, in the driveway talking to you guys um but yeah most days it'll probably be around a three hour stream but that's uh monday through friday i might have some days on the weekends where i stream but i think i'm gonna take weekends to try to do try to focus more on um, creating actual video content so you know like a 10 minute you know five to ten minute video or something and I know uh, one of the viewers, uh, Nate Dog, he was telling me yesterday about uh, YouTube Shorts, which that sounds like something I'm definitely interested in. So uh, trying to find a way to mix the two, because I definitely like doing the live stream thing, because um, it's a lot more personal. I get to actually know who is watching my videos, because uh, whenever I just post a video and then I see, you know, X amount of views, I just see the views. I don't know who's viewing it. But when I do live live streams, people actually take time out of their day to stop by, say hi, you know, or stay there the whole stream and, you know, have conversations with me, that kind of thing, which is really cool. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. Yes, live life with you. <laughs> uh, people want to see if you still got the glutes. <laughs> I do. Yo, I'll... I'll uh, I mean, I'm not saying I'm going to fucking post a video of just my ass or something, but I'll be posting different workouts, uh, the home workouts for sure, since that's basically where my, <clears throat> uh, I've been watching since the military base days. Good. And there's going to be a lot more too, but, um, yeah, I'll be posting videos of like home workouts and stuff. 
especially now because I'm in Kansas and I think Kansas is one of the most lenient states as when it comes to COVID. Um, but I know there are still a lot of places that uh, are on lockdown and, uh, you know, not really letting people go out or having to wear a mask every day and, you know, everywhere and all that kind of stuff. So definitely doing that home workouts will help out a lot of people. So I'll, I'm going to try to uh, get some content um, weekly and maybe post a video on like, a, I don't know, on a Saturday or a Sunday or maybe even Monday. I don't even really know. Um, but yeah, I'll try to, I'll try to do some type of video at least every other week. Um, we post the lives to be viewed later. I think they, uh, they automatically post. So the one from yesterday that I did, uh, some people were commenting on it today and it got uh, like a couple hundred views, like 250 or something like that. So I think it posts automatically. Um, <clears throat> I said to myself, who is this fine brother doing exercises? <laughs> Are you retired now? From the military, yes. Marine Corps veteran. But yeah, it was a good it was a good four years. I was actually planning on doing twenty, but it then it turned up to it ended up not being exactly what I was expecting it would uh it would be. But that's a story for another day. But it's midnight here. Been uh, uh, exactly three hours now, so I am going to call it here. Like I said, if you guys have, um, would love to hear that story. Yeah, for sure. I'll probably I'll, I might tell it tomorrow. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any recommendations for, like I said, tomorrow is going to be chest and tries. Um, which I mostly usually focus on chest with chest and tries days. But if you have any uh, exercises that you want tips on or any, you know, uh, exercise advice or anything like that, anything specific that you want to ask me, go ahead and uh, either you can, I guess, comment on one of the other videos that I have or um, whenever this live stream posts, it should post automatically whenever it does just comment on it and say, you know, this is what I want. I'm pretty sure, and it's been so long since I've used YouTube, I think you might be able to send messages. Uh, I know I've, I have already commented uh, or posted in like the um, uh, comments or community section. I think you can comment on in there and uh, ask for stuff. I should really get IG. Yeah, you're right. I really should. That way I can actually get messages and uh, post little clips and that kind of stuff for you guys to give recommendations and whatnot but all right guys it was fun got a good got a good leg workout hope i hope i motivated motivated you guys and uh hope you learned something love you guys too all right y'all have a good night sleep well See ya.